Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. So I am super excited to be doing this. I gotta turn up my volume. Um, anyway, I wanted to thank um, so I wanted to thank Nellie for having me come and talk to you guys about some um tips of the trade, if you will. Secrets, top secrets. Ooh. Um, so I came up with an acronym that um really like speaks to me a lot and it is called peace because really that's the times that we live in right now is let's you know live in peace let's um run our businesses in peace right so a little bit about my background and hopefully this will answer some of your questions because i think you guys need to understand kind of my situation too um that number one and first and foremost is i am a single mom of three amazing children. Um, I've got a seven-year-old, a 17-year-old, and an 18-year-old. We had her, um, our 18-year-old graduated from um, high school this year, so we got to do the whole virtual high school graduation and all that fun stuff, and it was a very different experience. Um, the other thing is, is I live in a very remote town in Alaska. It's actually the very top of Alaska. Um, it's called Barrow. And the only way to get in and out of here is by a plane. So I don't have the luxury of cars to drive to the next town. I do not have any of the wonderful things like everybody else does, you know, like Walmart and Target and all of those fun things. We don't have a movie theater. We don't have um, all the amenities, do you know, that you would think of that would go in a town, right? So there's that. The other thing is, is um, I do not do Color Street full time, y'all. I actually own a brick and mortar, mort bleh, brick and mortar store that I um, actually have about 15 employees of that I manage. And so um, this really is like a part time gig. <laughs> so if I can do it part time in a remote place out in the middle of nowhere, I know you guys can do it too. So that's, I just wanted to kind of start that, you know, premise off so that you guys understood that this isn't a full-time thing. You can do however much of your business that you want to do, and it all depends on the time that you give it. So I'm going to jump right into my acronym of PEACE, and the first letter that we're going to talk about is P, which is personal development. I cannot stress this enough, okay? Personal development is key to doing anything. So for me, I actually do personal development about two hours a day, and I am a total bookworm kind of person. I like that feeling of opening up a fresh book, reading it, highlighting it, and taking notes, all of those fun things. So um, currently I'm up to about 110 books that I've read since I've started my Color Street journey because it wasn't until I started my Color Street journey that I decided that this was, you know, an important facet that I needed in my life to get myself into the right frame of mind. A lot of times we experience things in life that aren't so pretty and aren't so happy and aren't so lucky. I mean, I went through a nasty divorce, eight-year custody battle, Honestly, it cost me about $80,000. I mean, I'm being real here. And I didn't have a very good self-esteem. I felt like total garbage. Um, I was gaining weight, you know, super fast. Um, there was nothing about what was happening in my life that made me feel good. And so I relied on that personal development to get me through those times. You know, I'd seen... Um, countless therapists. I was on medication, you know, all of those wonderful things. And yes, while it helped, it didn't help until I took the time and actually focused on the issues that were, you know, um, hurting me and making me not progress as an individual. So, um, you know, different forms of personal development can be reading books. It can be listening to podcasts. It can be watching trainings like this. I'm sure you guys are already learning stuff. It can be watching, you know, our um, trainings for Color Street. It can be watching somebody else's journey. It can be watching your friend's journey and seeing, you know, the trials and the tribulations that they go through and how do they overcome that. Um, it could be bullet journaling. It can be watching YouTube videos. It could be taking a bath at the end of the day for 30 minutes without the kids bothering the heck out of you, right? And, um, you know, putting a mud mask on. It can be all of those things. So just know that personal development is huge in this business and in any business that you do. 
because in order for you to um, do that whole know, like, and trust factor that we all talk about, I mean, I know you guys have heard it, you have to be able to show that you are growing too and that you're learning every single day. Because if you're not learning every single day, then what's the point, right? So that is my number one um, for my acronym for PEACE. It is personal development. So let's go on to number two, and that is engagement. Let's talk about engagement, okay? So engagement can come in all different forms. It can come in messaging back and forth through, you know, Messenger or through the DMs of Instagram or texting or, you know, even a phone call, um, any one of those things. It can be in the form of um, going on to social media, spending 10 minutes before you ever post anything. Comment on other people's posts. It actually, ironically enough, it does help your algorithm and it does shoot your um, posts that you post way up because you're engaging. Facebook and Instagram, they want you to stay on those platforms. And in order to stay on the platforms, it doesn't mean scroll through. You know what I mean? And get all the ideas and then never post. No, it means actually interacting with your friends. That's a whole premise of what social media is all about. So what I usually do is before I ever post anything, is I spend 10 to 15 minutes just commenting on other people's posts. Be genuine about those comments, okay? Don't just go, yay, thumbs up. Oh, little heart emoji. No, actually take the time and actually say, oh, Jody, you know, your kids are growing so much. I love that pool that you have. Pretty simple. And now you've established a relationship with that person. You've established that open door, you know, um, connectivity that you can take that conversation off of that post on her wall and go take it to a direct message. So that's the cool thing about it. Um, the other thing with engagement is stories, you guys. Social media is really going towards stories for interaction, not necessarily on your wall or in your groups. It is all about that micro, simple, fast content. That's what people are looking for. Um, a little thing, a little tidbit is um, another side note is um, you have seven seconds to impress somebody. So if you don't impress that person within the first seven seconds, you're done. Like they're going to scroll right by you and they're not going to watch you and they're not going to see you. Okay. So think about when you're driving down the freeway, right? And you see those big billboard signs and you see something, I don't know, it says old Navy on it or whatever, right? What gets your attention? So think about that when you think about presenting yourself on social media, what's going to get their attention. Okay. So you've got seven seconds to make it happen. So you got to make that first little, you know, statement that you're going to say on your wall or the first little thing that, you know, image that you're going to put. If you're going to use stories, you got to do that. Okay, so a little bit more about engagement is um, the other thing that I like to do is what are your hobbies? What do you like to do outside of Color Street? What makes you happy, right? So if you are into, I don't know, golden doodles, um, movie buffs, Disney, um, flowers, paintings, any of those things. Join those groups and interact in those groups. That's how you can grow your community. That's how you can grow your reach, how you get out there, how more people can see your stuff. Um, and so like I am a part of a few communities and I engage quite regularly in them. And what happens is, is I will do something like, um, there's a post that I actually did last week that says, um, Hey, I just wanted to share with you guys that I, you know, ranked number one with the company that I'm with and I'm super excited. And I just wanted to share my excitement with you. What are some of your wins this week? I got over 300 comments on that post. Do you know what I did with those 300 comments? I messaged each and every single one of those people. Not to sell Color Street, no, mm -mm. to develop some relationships, to develop some friendships. The Color Street will come later, and it does. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, I've got about 20 that I have to mail out today because of that post, and those are samples. So think about the things that interest you, okay? Think about the things that you like to do, like to, you know, um, learn more about, because I guarantee you other people do too. And when you have that common connecting um, platform, it makes it really easy to have a conversation with them. 
Okay, so that's what I have for engagement. The next part of my PEACE um, acronym is the A, and it is authenticity. Um, so nobody wants a fake person. Be real. You can be whoever you want to be. That's the beautiful thing about, you know, being in this country. And so own it. Love it. You know, it took me a long time to get where I'm at. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. I'm going to tell you guys that right now. Um, it took me a long time to develop my self-confidence to even get on here and do these kind of lives, you know, because like this is this is kind of scary. We're sitting here in my dining room talking to myself, basically. I mean, I know you guys are there, but it does it changes your mindset, you know, and so you want to be real. You want to tell your story. I mean, we've heard from many, many speakers in our corporates um, trainings. Do you know our last year guest speaker for conference this year's guest speaker for conference? Um, you will have bad days, but you're going to have good days, too. But you got to talk about those bad days. You got to talk about those good days. Not everything is peaches and cream. We're all human, right? But people want to see that real, authentic self. I mean, there are days that I want to pull my hair out because my kid is screaming on the floor because he doesn't want to do his homework or he doesn't want to clean his room. I mean, we all have those days, right? Share that experience with people, you know? People want to see the real you. They want to know that you are a human being. So be authentic in what you do, but try to do it in a positive way too. I mean, um... You know, with the author that Michelle Poehler that we listened to just yesterday, um, remember that one little saying that she said, what is the worst that can happen? Change that one word around. What is the best that can happen? And it is. It's changing those little words. It's just one little word, but it changes the whole definition, the whole meaning of that sentence. So that's what I mean by authenticity. Just be real, be you. And you know what? If people don't like it, guess what? There's a billion other people on the planet. Your shortage of, of newcomers is, it's, there is no shortage. There's lots of people out there. Um, so the next one that I want to talk about is number four is consistency is the key. Okay, I'm going to tell you guys right now, posting once a week, that's not consistent. Not at all. So um, what I usually do, so let's, I'm going to break it down. So let's start with just my basic wall. So that's going to be your wall. That's your landing platform on Facebook. That is your profile page. And I like to call it a wall. I post on there at minimum once a day, maximum twice a day. That's it. No more, no less. So <clears throat> the reason why I do that is, is that you want to keep your numbers, your stats for your algorithm up high. So you post at least once a day. And I'm not talking about sharing somebody else's post. No, I'm talking about creating your own post. And it doesn't have to be about Color Street. It can be a picture of you playing with your kids. It can be a picture of you taking a walk down by the lake. It can be a picture of you eating your lunch. It doesn't matter. Just make it a post, an actual post, not sharing somebody else's post. Okay, so that's just on your profile wall page. Now, when it comes to stories, now this is everything I'm going to talk about right now is just Facebook. So when it comes to stories, you need to post at least six to eight times a day because we're looking for that micro content. That's the stuff that Facebook likes. And so whether it's a short little video, a short um, inspirational quote, a Nelfie, I mean, there's many, many different things that you can post. People want to know what's going on in your everyday life. And that's a great way to showcase that. And so you can share those micro content ideas of what you're doing every day. So then, of course, the question becomes, where do I find the content, right? Because, I mean, I don't know about you, but some days I feel like I lead a very boring life. <laughs> so I live in a place where there's no trees, no grass. How do I make that fun, right? So I, I always try to find the beauty in everything. And that's what I invite you guys to do is find the beauty in everything. It can be something as simple as taking a photo of this cute little box and saying, did you know how I got that? And you're creating that curiosity. So you want to create curiosity. You want to show them your daily life. Think of your life as a TV reality show. Yes, you can be the star of your own show. It's amazing. So um, that's what I do for my stories. Um, and you can also... 
you know, break down your stories where you, just like Nellie just said, you can break them into um, multiple picks in one story. You can break those picks and do a sequence story. There's so many different avenues that you can do for that. Um, so I invite you guys, if you guys are not using stories, please use stories. It sells lots. I can tell you that I actually sell more nails <laughs> posting stories than I do in my VIP group, okay? So if that tells you anything, post the stories, okay? Okay, so let's talk about VIP groups. There's a couple of things that I've seen kind of floating around. How do we grow VIP groups? How do we get engagement? I mean, there's, you know, multiple of things, right? Because we all are struggling in that arena. So Facebook groups are designed to help people um, be there so that you are intrigued and interested in being there, right? So if you're posting content that isn't intriguing and isn't interesting, then they're not going to want to stay around, right? They're going to want to just jump the ship and say, later, I'm out of here. So um, you need to find a way to post content that's interesting and exciting. The thing that people love the most is offering their opinion. They want to add their two cents to everything, right? So post those type of images, Type an image of two Nelfies, A or B. You're getting interaction, right? So that's what you want to do is you want to get that interaction going, okay? So it doesn't always have to be Color Street related. So I usually in my VIP group, because I'm a single mom, I target single moms. That's just who I like to talk to because we have something in common, okay? So I do hacks, little mom hacks. I do recipes, I do self-care tips because I'm a huge self-care fan. I do, um, you know, comparison photos for Nelfies. You know, I occasionally sprinkle in Color Street. It's not the main, like, kit and caboodle of my VIP group, okay? So you have to offer more than just, hey, I have this sale going on. Hey, I'm going to drop the price to 10 bucks. Hey, I'm going to do this. No. Have them share pictures of themselves. Have them interact with each other. Do you know, do a daily challenge. Do a daily picture challenge. You know, say, hey, I invite my VIP um, peeps to show me a picture of their beautiful face holding a box. Okay, there's, you just have that interaction going, okay? So, um, how many times do I post on my VIP group daily? I post three times a day. And you know, the nice thing about VIP groups is you can schedule those posts. You don't have to sit on Facebook all day long. And I don't, I don't have time for it. I mean, to be very honest with you, I don't. So I just schedule my post out and I walk away. Okay. The other thing that I do that is um, pretty important, you guys, is that if somebody comments on your post, please comment back to them. They're taking the time to comment on your post. You should take the time to acknowledge that. So I oftentimes I see a lot of people, they will make a lot of comments, but nothing is getting posted back to them. And so that results in a dead conversation. You want that conversation to keep going, okay? The other thing that I do not do, and you know, I, I know this is kind of a touchy subject with a lot of people, but when we have releases that come out, right? Like today's restocks or um, a new nail set coming out or whatever, I don't post about it, not at all. With the way things have been lately with getting restocks and actually um, getting that nail set, right? It's been challenging. I'm not going to lie. It's been challenging for everybody. So why have a customer get excited about, let's just say, you know, Sahara Jewel, right? So let's say they restocked today. Well, I didn't get my hands on Sahara Jewel, right? Uh-oh. But my customer, Molly, she wanted this set. What am I going to do? right? So then you're trying to scramble and get the set and you can't get the set. So when they have the new releases and they have all that kind of stuff, I don't, I don't, I don't share that with my VIP people. I share it after I got the product in my hand. So, and I know that some people, do you know what I mean? It's, it's a touchy thing because you're excited about the product and yes, we're going to get into the excitement of things and you can do it in such a way that, um, it, you still create that excitement. Okay. So, and oftentimes for me, because I live so far away from um, New Jersey, um, I don't actually get the sets until well after the events have come and gone. So the new um, stylist sets that just came out, those five, right? What, last week or something? I don't even know. Um, I don't have any of those yet. I've ordered them, but they're not here. The summer sets for me, 
those just showed up yesterday. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I have to play with the game of the mail. And it doesn't matter if it comes FedEx or regular mail. It's just that's because where I'm at. So, and that's okay. I've learned to adapt to those little changes. All right. So, um, Mackenzie asked, how long do you schedule post for ahead of time at once? Usually for me, I am a fly by the seat of my kind of pants. Eh. Anyway, I post them in the morning, every morning. Um, I usually will get up a little bit early before all of my kids do and have a cup of coffee and sit on the couch. And that's what I'm doing. I'm interacting with other people, then I schedule my posts, and then I walk away. And I usually don't go back onto Facebook until about midday or so. And then I'll spend about a half hour responding to everybody, checking my messages and things like that. So I usually do it in the morning is what I do. So I, I'm not a huge planner out, and I think that's because things change so drastically and so much in every single day that I don't know what, sometimes I don't know what I'm going to do because half the time, like with my brick and mortar store, I may not have staff that shows up that day. So I've got to be able to pivot and I have to be able to change and I have to be able to adapt. And so that's why I just kind of do it on a daily basis. So that's for that question. Um, somebody had asked um, about working full time. Um, who is it? Dorothy. Guess what? I'm here to tell you I do. I work full time. I don't do Color Street full time. And if I can do this, I know you can do it. So um, did you overcome any obstacles unique in a living in Alaska? I mean, I think I have. I think the numbers speak for itself, you know. Um, the other thing that I do um, that might be a little bit differently is I keep an Excel spreadsheet of all of my customers with their names and addresses and what they have purchased in the past. And about once a month, I pick about 20 people because that's about how much I can handle. Do you know what I mean? Um, to engage and interact. And I will send them a little note with a twosie in it, reminding them that I sell nails. And they get mail in the mail. And it's kind of cool because then it generates another sale. Um, so that's a good way to kind of recircle to those people who have ordered from you in the past. I know it doesn't work for everybody because if we have vendor events or if we have, do you know what I mean? Different things, you're not going to get everybody that was there before, but you're going to get a good chunk of people that you can, um, kind of retouch. Do you know what I mean? Remember the times that you get mail in the mail and how special that makes you feel. That's what your VIPs are looking for. They're looking for that uniqueness, that different, what do you do different than anybody else? Um, how did you go about growing your customer base was another question. Um, that takes time. And it goes back to my point number four of consistency. You have to be consistent. Um, people watch you, whether you know it or not. I guarantee you, most of you have probably seen me before, have probably been watching me. I know Nellie watches me. <laughs> Sorry, I'm calling you out, girl. Um, but I know, like, for me, I watch other people, too. I never comment. I never say anything. But I put those ideas, like, in the back of my head, like, okay, that's a cool idea. You know what I mean? Oh, wow, she showed up today. You know, and you can tell the people that show up every day. You can tell the people that are there on social media all the time. So you want to make sure that you do show up every day and that you are consistent. And that's how you do grow your customer base. You grow your customer base by being consistent. You grow your customer base by messaging them, inviting them about the opportunity, about even just being in your VIP group. It can be something as simple as that. As far as I'm concerned, that's a win. That is a total win. You know, even if they just join your VIP group and they're little sheeps on the side, do you know what I mean? And they're just kind of like, ooh, what is she doing today? So, you know, you have to, even if it doesn't result in a sale, you still are impacting that person's life. And that's how you have to kind of look at it. Okay, so let's go into number five, excitement. Excitement is everything, y'all. So um, think about the exciting time when you were able to use your Color Street card and you went to the gas station and you bought a tank of gas. I know it sounds so insignificant and so minor, but dude, it is everything. It is just everything. Make a post about that. It is so, those business blessings, they are the key for everything. Honestly, they really are because what you're doing is you're planting that seed. You're planting that little nugget that says, hey, do you think I could pay for my gas with my car? 
You're opening up that conversation, okay? So business blessings. I post mine at least once a week. Sometimes, excuse me, a little bit more depending on what's going on in the week um, because, you know, we all have things that we're blessed about in this business. It can be something as simple as I have a new best friend. I have a new sister in Color Street. I have a new... Um, pair of earrings because of color street. I mean, it can be anything. So, you know, get, get excited about those things. Um, in fact, my daughter, she is a color street stylist as well. And a couple of days ago, she took her brother to, um, the little restaurant here and got an ice cream and she used her color street debit card. She made a post about it. I'm so proud of her. I mean, she's only 18, but she still made that post and it makes a difference because people are watching that. So um, flipping over to Instagram a little bit, don't be afraid of Instagram. I know a lot of you are not on Instagram. Go on Instagram, y'all. 40% of my business is from Instagram, just so you guys know. <laughs> so utilize those stories. Instagram is a different platform. It's mainly used for pictures and micro content. Hey, that's what we're all about, right? We're all about showcasing our pictures. So the other day, I know I'm kind of bouncing everywhere. The other day, back to Facebook, I had made a post with a book that I'm reading and um, using this wall behind me. My focus was the book. It wasn't the wall. Do you know what? I got 15 sales from that post. Not to sell the book. I didn't write the book. I was just showing people what I read. But because they saw that behind me. It was a um, attraction marketing post. Had nothing to do with my nails. I talked about the book completely. So think about those little things where you can um, incorporate that into your, you know, daily photos. So I'm going to go ahead and read your comments here and see if there's any questions. I'm going to open it up for questions now. Um, bum, bum, bum. Do you welcome your new members in a post or who add your VIP page? I wasn't sure how to feel about this. Yes, I do welcome them. I do that once a week on Wednesdays. Um, that way it doesn't become too overwhelming because I know that we all have teams and we all have, do you know what I mean? Different things that we're doing and it's hard to kind of balance all of that stuff. But yes, I do do a welcome post for them. And I basically, what I ask them is, is can you let us know, you know, your name? Um, what is your family status? Um, what is your favorite thing that you like to do? And then what is your favorite nail set? Simple, simple. And so, um, that is, but that's what I do, you know, and every person is different. I mean, just like Nellie just said, she doesn't. Um, and that's okay too. There's no right or wrong answer for that, but I personally do. So there's that. Um, dun, 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 dun. And yeah, I agree with Nellie too. You can also message them directly and, you know, give them a welcome too. It just depends on how you run your VIP group, you know, um, and what you do with that. So, um, hopefully all of this was helpful for you guys. And I really thank you guys for having me here today. Um, and, um, I invite you guys to follow me on my wall. That's fine. I do not add, um, stylists to my VIP groups and I don't normally friend stylists anymore only because I'm almost maxed out on my friends and I want to keep those little, um, I have less than 20 spots. <laughs> I want to keep them for my customers. So don't feel offended if I decline your friend request. Um, but please, I invite you guys to follow me. That's totally fine. I have no problem with that whatsoever. And um, and if you guys have questions or you know need help with anything, I'm here too. So I may not respond right away, but we'll get those questions asked too. So if you guys have any questions, drop them in this thread. I will um, come back and check later on too, because I know some of you guys will have to catch the replay. Um, so anyway, thank you guys all for having me. And you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Take care, everybody. Goodbye.